let's look at a problem where knowing a quick algebraic shortcut can really make the difference in, in being able to solve it. And the shortcut is the difference of two perfect squares. And I went over these shortcuts in one of the math bootcamp videos. So go ahead and check that out if you have questions. Um, so let's look at this. If P and N are integers such that P is greater than N is greater than zero and P squared minus N squared is 12, which of the following can be equal to P minus N or which of the following can be P minus N. So notice it's a can be question. So it doesn't have to be. It's just an issue of can it be? And then we're given three choices here. So this is a one, two, three question. Let's do this systematically. So the first thing, let's test out one. Well, we've got P squared minus N squared. Whenever you see the difference of two perfect squares, as we do here, instinctively, immediately, you want to change it into the factored form. So P plus N times P minus N is equal to 12. And now things crystallize a bit more. So what would happen if this equals one? Well, if that equals 1, then this would have to equal 12, right? Because 12 times 1 is equal to 12. Now, can this be possible? Can we have P minus N equal 1 and P plus N equals 12, noting that P and N are integers? Well, let's see. Uh, P plus N equals 12. We can just solve this as two equations and two unknowns if we wanted to. Um, so we would add these. We would get 2P cancel equals 13. Notice P is 13 halves, not an integer. So in theory, you could work this out. You'd have, I guess, P is 13 halves and N is what? A half? Does that even make sense? Um, I don't know if that even makes any sense. Anyway, we just know that this is not an integer, so 1 is off the table. Uh, how about 2? Well, again, if P plus N times P minus N is equal to 12. And if we know that P minus N is equal to two, this would have to equal six. Now, does that make sense? Well, again, let's go ahead and solve that. P plus N equals um, six. P minus N equals two. So we get two P, bring this down. Two P equals, this cancels eight. So P is four. And if P is four, then N would equal um, uh, n would equal, let's see, 2. So we get P plus n is 6, P plus 2 is 6, and P minus n is 2. That works out perfectly. So 2 is one that works. And finally, let's try 4. So we would get P plus n times P minus n is 12. If P minus n is 4, that means this is 3. So now we'll go ahead and solve the system of equations here. We're going to get 2p cancels equals 7. And again, we're going to get p is 7 halves, uh, another integer or non-integer solution. So we can get rid of 3. So the only one that works is 2. Oh, one thing. Once we get rid of 1, we can go ahead and get rid of any choice that includes 1. So that would be a, c, and e. 2 worked, so we would get rid of anything that didn't have 2, but they both have 2. 3 doesn't work, so we get rid of d, and we're left with b, which is the answer. So the point of this one is not so much this mess down here. This is a number 15. It's hard. But it's to see that once we see this, and you also, especially when you see that, you want to split it immediately into its factored, uh, factored pairs as the difference of two perfect squares.